Hi and welcome to this new video. Today we are going to finally unbox the DOS Soundbox XL. Many people have requested it and I also got an information from the company that they will send me one. But of course it took some time, not sure why. But now it's finally here. So I still have it in the shipping box. Let's take it out here. And here we have the speaker. And I'm of course really excited for it as it's, uh, I don't know, about to be the best budget speaker. It goes for about $90 and it's pretty much a full copy from the hardware from the Sony X77. And this in theory was a great speaker, but they just messed it up with the software tuning. So this is some kind of, I don't know, cheaper and of course also better take on the Sony's design. So let's unbox it. As you can see, the seals are already open. The box is also a bit damaged. But I don't mind because it's of course just a review unit and nothing, I don't know, I paid for. Um, and as you can see, it has already been opened. There are some, I don't know, dust things on it. Also, the foil isn't on anymore. So yeah, it looks a bit not damaged, but as if someone took it out already. Let's see. Okay. Let's place it here. Let's put those things aside. Also, we have a manual, of course, just like with any speaker. And in this small box here, there's probably the charger. So yeah, there's a um, auxiliary cable and a charger, which has also been taken out already. But that's of course also no issue as long as everything works. So let's take away the packaging and put it aside and let's focus on the speaker here. So here it is now, and as you can see, it looks really, really nice. I mean, of course, it's fully made from plastic, but uh, yeah, of course, somewhere the cost has to come from. So again, it only goes for $90, and when Clavinet Junkie compared it to other speakers like, I don't know, the FIFA Oslo, the FIFA Helsinki, um, I could hear it with my own headphones. The DOS even had some advantages. It had deeper bass than the FIFA Oslo even, and the FIFA Oslo goes for about, I think, $500. So that's pretty much actually no comparison price-wise, but the DOS could actually keep up when it comes to sound. Um, so I was definitely dying to get one for reviewing and for testing. But sadly it was out of stock in Germany all the time. So I requested it at the company and they uh, told me that they will send me one as soon as they have it in stock. And now here it is. Um, again, as you can see, it's uh, fully made from plastic, but it's actually not cheap feeling. So it's quite heavy and also the grill is made from metal. It says DOS right here. On top you have all of your buttons, so the button layout is quite a bit different to the Sony. The Sony had like a glass panel on top which would scratch really easily and it also had some weird uh, kind of touch buttons where you would never know if you press them or not. Here it is, in my opinion, much better. You just have the normal buttons, on and off, mode switch, volume buttons and of course your playback buttons. At the back you can notice the similarities between this speaker and the Sony again. Um, you have, I think, a different charging port, um, but you also um, have the same kind of backplate here with this kind of, I don't know, cutout. I don't know what's this for. Uh, it doesn't seem like a handle as it's way too small. Maybe it's just a design element, but the Sony also had it. And the Sony also had an antenna in here, which you could take out and then you could connect it via Wi-Fi. And of course, the DOS doesn't have it. It just, I don't know, brings it down to the essentials. But in my opinion, of course, uh, features are by far not as important as the sound. And as the Sony could really impress with the, uh, with the features, but not with the sound, I'm really excited for this speaker, which seems to be a great performing speaker just for, I don't know, pure audio lovers, as it also features a almost fully hi-fi tuning, so there's pretty much no bass boost, um, I don't know, no weird travel boost in the presence region. So it's pretty much a very hi-fi sounding speaker comparable to the FIFA um, Helsinki here. Maybe I can get it. So yeah, this is the FIFA in a comparison. As you can see, it's a little bit, I don't know, taller than the DOS, but not by much. It's quite a bit, oh, is it heavier? I'm not sure, I think the DOS is heavier, but of course you can see the DOS is much wider. And from the thickness, they should be about the same. Maybe the DOS is even a bit thicker, but of course the FIFA still has the grill, so they should be about the same thickness. And the FIFA is a bit uh, taller, but by far not as wide. So yeah, they should be quite comparable, although the FIFA still is a bit smaller. But now I'm of course very excited for how the speaker sounds. So let's yeah, 
place it here again. Um, so now please put up your headphones as this is a normal microphone recording and they require headphones to sound good and enjoy the sound comparison and the first impressions of this hopefully very great sounding speaker. So I would say that we will try out the first track here. I have already taken a very short listen to it and I can tell you that it really sounds great. It's really, uh, I think in my opinion, the best speaker by far you can find under $100. But there is one speaker missing on this table here, which is the Dock and Define. I think that's the only speaker for the same price about, which can come even close. It goes for about $130. So price-wise, they are quite comparable. And also size-wise and feature-wise, they are pretty much the same. Just that the DOS sounds like a hi-fi speaker and the Dock and has a fun tuning to it. So I might do this in another sound comparison, which I'm of course very excited for as those two speakers are just great, especially for the money uh, you pay, but they would also be worth it for $200 or something. So now let's check out the first track. It's quite a modern track and let's see how the DOS sounds here. This is about 50% volume. So it really, really sounds great. You could hear a nice deep bass kick, mids and treble were totally neutral and very refined sounding. So there really is nothing you could, I don't know, criticize about the sound. Usually I don't really like the DOS speakers. With the DOS Traveler, it became a bit better. A video of this one will follow up soon as well. Um, but the older DOS, I think, soundbox, the normal ones, they didn't sound good at all. They had, I think, no DSP tuning. They just, uh, I don't know, sounded, uh, sounded pretty bad, sorry. Um, while the DOS XL really is totally blowing me away, especially for the money you pay, it's a really great and mature speaker. But let's check out another speaker at this kind of price, which is the UE Wonder Boom. Of course, you can see it's a totally different concept. It's a much smaller speaker. It's not meant to sound like hi-fi. Um, it's meant to be a small portable outdoor speaker. But if you pay over $100, which is about $20 more than you would pay for the DOS, you of course also expect at least comparable sound. So let's see if this is the case here. And let's see if the UE is somehow worth it. Uh, and if it can justify the higher price with better sound. Well, no, it doesn't seem like the Wonder Boom can justify any of its higher price tag with better sound or anything. Maybe, of course, you can say, I don't know, uh, better features like waterproofing and stereo pairing, but that's nothing which makes the speaker worth more money over another one. And as you could hear, the DOS totally blew it away. So maybe, again, this comparison is a bit unfair. At least size-wise, you can see the drivers and the overall housing of the UE is much smaller. But let's see what UE has to offer at a price point of 350 euros. This is a very pricey speaker. It's the UE Mega Blast. It's very new, even newer than the DOS. Again, goes for $350 and is also a bit more comparable size-wise. So let's see if this con, uh, if, if this one, sorry, not this con, um, can, I don't know, keep up with it um, or at least, again, can justify the higher price tag. So let's check it out here, maybe with another track. Uh, yeah, this one should be good. And let's see how it sounds here.
Well, again, it seems like the Ultimate Ears company doesn't have anything to offer, which they could, I don't know, throw against the DOS XL here. You could hear the Ultimate Ears Mega Blast had pretty much, pretty much, not pretty much, uh, pretty much no chance against the DOS. Um, also sound-wise, you could hear the DOS had fuller bass, but again, the UE might have seemed louder to you, but my decibel, I don't know, scale on my recorder here, yeah, many cables for my microphones, actually tells me that both were playing at the same volume level, and this is just due to the tuning of the UE. They totally pushed the mids way too far, and this is why it appears louder, because when mids are pushed, uh, a speaker sounds louder than it actually is, and on the decibel scale, both were actually playing equally loud, just that the DOS has the much better tuning. Let's maybe give the UE another shot with a different kind of track. Maybe uh, this one here. It is a bit smoother sounding and maybe, I don't know, not as bad on the UE. So let's see how they compare here. As you could hear again, the DOS sounded much better, but you could hear some slight rattle and I already know the answer for this. You need to take off the grill and then you need to remove the, I don't know, very thin kind of fabric uh, material underneath the grill. It's just, yeah, as big as the grill and it sits behind it so you cannot see the drivers through it, so it looks a bit nicer. But this actually is quite loose and it hits the drivers. When the drivers hit it, yeah, it makes this kind of uh, very soft rattle sound. So don't think that the DOS is the worst speaker than the UE. It's actually just a manufacturing issue, which is still acceptable at a price of $90. What I don't think is acceptable is the sound of the UE at $300. So let's put this back and let's try a normal speaker which is the JBL Charge 3, also goes for about uh, $150. So actually not that much more expensive than the DOS. And as you can see, it's also a bit smaller and a bit more portable. And it also has a different kind of features. It's fully waterproof and it has a charge out port. So you can charge your mobile device on the go, which is of course nice. The DOS doesn't have this, but maybe the DOS has the better sound. So let's try out the same track again just with the JBL this time. You don't have to wait. You could hear again the DOS sounded quite a bit better. Although the gap wasn't that big anymore, the DOS still is in another class. It has the way more linear tuning, it has better travel performance than the JBL, as the JBL is lacking quite some travel, and the DOS, of course, also had the much nicer, deeper, and smoother bass kick. Let's check out another track by Nigel Good. Very nice sounding again. you could hear again, the DOS sounded just a bit better. I mean, it has bigger dynamic range in the sound, so it has deeper and smoother bass, and also has way clearer and more linear sounding mids, and especially treble, which sounds much better on the DOS. Again, maybe the comparison is a bit unfair, because the DOS, of course, is a much bigger speaker than the JBR, but still, at the price point of the DOS, there's really nothing which could beat it when it comes to the sound. Let's check out another part of this track.
difficult here, it's a totally different sounding speaker. I mean, it even had some slight stereo effect due to the very wide housing, more resolution in the travel, there's just no comparison. Still, the JBL is a nice package, but I think it's time for JBL to move on and maybe come out with the JBL Charge 3 Plus or maybe even already Charge 4, maybe at uh, the kind of, I think it's uh, CES or something in Las Vegas, maybe next year um, when they can release some new products, which hopefully will be even better sounding and maybe also a bit cheaper. As you could see, uh, the DOS has really, I don't know, um, overtaken the JBLs when it comes to the sound and especially sound to price ratio as I cannot quite recommend the JBL for the money if you can find a DOS. Of course, if you need a smaller speaker with, I don't know, better um, kind of portability and better features than the DOS, the JBL might still be the one for you. But when you are only looking for sound, the DOS is definitely the one I would recommend for this price as there is no speaker except for the Dockin, which can even come close. So now let's maybe compare it against the last speaker, which is the FIFA Helsinki here. It's again a very great sounding speaker. Uh, it goes for about uh, yeah $400 or no, you can find it for about $320 by now. So it uh, has dropped in price quite a bit, but still of course uh, didn't drop to the uh, no price level of the DOS. So again, uh, it's about more than three times more expensive. Um, but of course you are also getting some real hi-fi sound and I would maybe call the DOS some kind of I don't know, mini version or kind of cheap version of the FIFA. As you can see it's not made from this fabric and metal, it's just made from simple plastic and uh, a kind of uh, thin metal grill. But sound wise you should definitely not underrate it, especially when you compare it against something more expensive like the FIFA. It can surprisingly hold up very nicely. So let's maybe check out this track right here, which is uh, yeah quite... Uh, dance kind of track, dancey track, if you can say it like this. And after that, we'll also play some nice jazz music. So let's see how they compare here. So this is the FIFA now. For now I would say that the FIFA maybe still sounds a little bit better, although not as powerful as the DOS. Still it's a bit more precise sounding, the bass sounds a bit rounder, the overall package is a bit more, I don't know, detailed and refined. But of course you cannot expect a $90 speaker to sound exactly the same as a $400 or originally $400 speaker. But of course it comes very close, it's very impressive sounding, it even had a bit more power behind the bass kicks. It didn't sound as artificial as the FIFA, it sounded very real. Um, and very powerful, um, so it's really a great speaker, even if you compare it against something as, I don't know, famous, at least in the speaker kind of world, and as uh, high quality as the FIFA, it can still keep up, which of course makes it something really outstanding. Let's try the track from before again, it's some kind of smooth pop track, and I will start with the FIFA again. You don't have to So sorry for now you have to ignore this kind of small rattle from the fabric inside. But as you could hear again, the DOS really was on one level with the FIFA, which is in my opinion, I don't know, one of the best and most impressive speakers of 2017. Definitely there's the JBL Boombox I was really excited for. Definitely of course also the, the, the DVLA Gold Phantom, not the, the DVLA, <laughs> the DVLA Gold Phantom, sorry. Um, and of course uh, now there's also the DOS, I mean $90 and this great sound, it's really, really impressive. 
Um, and now let's try a jazz track here. Of course, the FIFA is the king of hi-fi audio when it comes to portable speakers. Um, so let's see how the DOS can compare here. So now it's really impressive again. I would probably call the DOS a kind of very, very slightly worse version of the FIFA, but of course about, I don't know, four or three times less expensive version of the FIFA as well. So you could hear it was quite comparable when it came to the bass and also comparable when it came to the clarity of the mids and of course travel resolution, but the FIFA just uh, does everything as good as the DOS, just, I don't know, slightly better, maybe 10 or 20% better than the DOS again, maybe a bit more refined mids, a bit more precise bass and a bit more resolution in the travel, but it's really not that much. And in my opinion, it's also definitely not worth, uh, I don't know, um, price point of uh, $350 or $320 compared to $90 of the DOS. I mean, there's nothing the DOS cannot do which the FIFA can do. Size-wise, they are almost equal. Of course, maybe the DOS doesn't look as great, but in my opinion, the um, FIFA really looks like a handbag sometimes, so maybe you even like the DOS more. The DOS definitely has a better battery life than the FIFA. It has the same features, so only Bluetooth, no Wi-Fi or anything and they are about equally loud. They have the, I don't know, equally great sound. Uh, maybe that the FIFA is 20% better, but it's about 300% more expensive than the DOS, which is, uh, yeah, I don't know, not maybe worth the slightly better sound. But you really have to decide for yourself. Let's maybe try one last track and then we are done. And here we have the same thing as before. In my opinion, the DOS is a very slightly worse version of the FIFA for much less money. You could hear the DOS sounded just great on its own. But then if you compare it against the FIFA and you switch around, you notice that the FIFA still, I don't know, sounds slightly better. Again, bass kicks were a bit more refined and also precise. And the overall sound signature, signature, not not signature, <laughs> signature. Sorry again, um, was just a little bit, I don't know, more precise and detailed sounding, and of course also more transparent sounding with the FIFA. It still had a bit more travel resolution, so it sounded a bit more sparkling. The hi hat sounded a bit more detailed on the FIFA. Also, the mids again were a bit more present and a bit more transparent sounding on the FIFA than uh, on the DOS and bass kicks also were a bit more, I don't know, precise, but maybe not as powerful. The DOS really makes you dance and really makes you move, while the FIFA still has some very slightly artificial touches to it, 
when it comes to the bass performance. So maybe for modern music, the DOS might even be better with uh, no some tracks, which is just mind blowing at a price point of $90. But for overall music listening and especially critical and personal music listening, I would maybe still give the FIFA the edge here as it still sounds uh, noticeably clearer and more refined and detailed and just a bit rounder. But of course, uh, not that you would say, wow, this is such a better speaker. This is such a, uh, no, a great sounding speaker compared to the DOS and the DOS is just bad sounding against it. That's definitely not the case here. If you switch between them, you notice that the FIFA is better but it's not a huge difference. You just notice it, it's there, um, but it's maybe even not worth the extra price point of the FIFA. I mean, it's $400 or it used to be $400, now it's $320 and the DOS is just $89 to be exact and that's just uh, crazy because it sounds almost as good as the FIFA and maybe even better with very rare tracks um, and that's just very impressive. So now I think this is it. Uh, I again have to apologize for the slightly uh, rattling bass on the DOS here. Uh, it's just because of this fabric material. I will take it out as soon as I can. So just in some minutes when I end this video. And then there will be many more comparisons following up. For example, a quick comparison or a sound comparison with the Dock and Define and maybe even a separate comparison with the FIFA compared to the DOS as those are very, very comparable when it comes to sound. Both sound great, both have a hi-fi tuning and both have almost the same size, just not the very same price tag. So it will be an interesting time uh, to come with the DOS and all of the videos around it. There are also some other speakers which I will check out. Maybe the new Teufel Rockstar Air, although I really don't have anything I could compare it against uh, except for the Devialy Phantom. Um, but we will see, there is much, uh, no, not much, there is uh, a lot of interesting stuff coming up here, that's what I wanted to say. Um, and yeah, uh, just stay excited for it. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like as always, or subscribe to the channel to see many more of this kind of videos. Until then, have a great time and bye-bye.